Hello everybody, this is a video with a list of things I think will be helpful for you to know and consider when you travel to Scotland. I've divided this video into four sections. The first section is going to be about mindset. The second section will be about organizing yourself. The third section is about conditions that you will encounter when you're in Scotland. And the last section, the fourth section, will be about specific sites and tips that I wanted to give you in case you want to visit one of those sites. So let's get started. Mindset. So when you plan your travel to Scotland, just be aware that people are very friendly. I don't know how outgoing you are and how you easily you connect with people when you're on the road. Some people probably might not be so outgoing. Others just, you know, connect within a blink of an eye with other people in other places. But still, I want to make sure I have mentioned it. So People are very, very friendly in Scotland. You can easily um, have a conversation with anybody and they can also probably give you good tips. Like we had when we were traveling between Cullen Castle and the ferry bridge and we were parking overnight by the seaside and there were people in a big truck. They pointed out the seals that were swimming nearby in the water and we wouldn't have noticed them at all if they hadn't told me. So that was a nice encounter. And also the, the sites, many sites in Scotland are very kids friendly. So some castles um, did, for example, like the Lego hunt that, uh, you know, you were looked to, you were supposed to look for Lego people in each room of a castle, which um, was very nice. Uh, they, they had very nice spots uh, for those Lego people to be um, yeah, sighted. And then uh, also that... When you go to the bathroom, I, I don't know, I haven't seen this so, in so many places, that um, the, for the female needs, they, they were supplies um, in, in several places. So that was really nice to know. And I was really grateful for that. So thank you for everybody in Scotland who maybe sees this video and is somehow connected to, to that condition. Also, when you go to Scotland, um, of course, this should be a no-brainer, but still I wanted to make sure to mention it, that, that you should be considerate of people around you when you, when you go somewhere or you need to park up somewhere or you, you are visiting sites together with other people most of the time. So for one, try to be considerate, make sure that other people might want to take pictures of certain things as well. And on the other hand, um, we went to this one stone circle. I will put the name somewhere in the video here, where there was a group standing to the main big stone for the whole time. And um, I should have, and I didn't, I should have asked the group to be so kind and move away because they stood there for, I don't know, at least 30 minutes. And I think this is not a, such a nice, considerate way to do. So if you're in a group, please also, yeah, be mindful of other people visiting. Next thing, organizing yourself. Be early and book on time. Some things do work out spontaneously, but uh, sometimes it's really useful if you have an idea of what you want to do and also really making sure that, that you arrive at a certain time. For example, we went to this one waterfall by the coast and by sheer luck, basically, we came before the big crowds arrived. So we had a nice spot to park and everybody else who came later, it was a struggle for them to, to find somewhere to park. The next thing is um, Island Donan Castle, for example. When we tried to get there and take pictures, there was a big queue on the road for people who wanted to go to Island Donan Castle and it was like midday, so 2, 2 p.m. about, and it was some day in August. So if you're traveling in the summer months, you might want to be there a bit earlier. However, Island Donan Castle was nicely organized and they, they actually had people managing the traffic, which was really great. But moral at the same time, um, they, there weren't people managing the traffic. That might be something if you're from um, the Barmora stuff, you might want to consider putting people out there helping with the traffic and uh, the parking mayhem that was going on. We, we got our spot, but it was a bit of um, nerve-wracking, I have to say. Then next thing I wanted to say, also the, the Scottish pounds. I don't know if you were aware, but Scotland has their own currency that they also use. And when you pay, you might get the, the cash return 
with Scottish pounds. So have a plan how to change them back. We didn't make the time to do that. And I still have Scottish pounds and I'm searching for places that will take them and exchange them back for me into euros or other currency that I can use. And then also organizing yourself. I think that's good to know. It's fairly easy to park and pay in Scotland. There's those machines where you can either pay or um, they also have instructions how to pay via credit card and do this really electronically. So that was super convenient and I really loved that. So you could do it basically anywhere where we would park up for the night, um, dedicated camper van spaces. You could pay by um, credit card or just in front of a pub. There was also the possibility. So that was really great. The next part, conditions, general conditions that you will encounter when you're in Scotland. First of all, it's people laugh about it a bit, but still I want to mention it. The weather in Scotland, it's very rainy. Surprise, surprise. Still maybe half a card up your sleeve when you have such a day that's really super rainy. And of course, also make sure that you bring the right gear for, for such a day when you want to be out and about. We were sort of lucky. We once went on a hop on, hop off bus tour, which also was super crowded. So no surprise because of the weather, because not only we did think about the solution and definitely making sure that you have rainproof jackets with you and the footwear that you would need when you walk around or hike, take a hike. One thing I want to mention also is the roads. Most of the roads are really nice and wide and it's really easy to drive with a camper van, but also I I was happy I looked up the the roads in some places. For example, I have Isle of Sky. I think there was one road that I really didn't dare to really drive down because it looked like it was one lane. They have a lot of passing places that they put up so pe people can, you know, go to that place and the cars can pass. And if it's not a busy road, that's no problem. But if it's a busy road, it might be a bit tricky. We had this condition in Cullen Castle. Yeah, of course, there's many people. And it was a bit of a, yeah, really organize yourselves on the road thing. At the same time, driving along Loch Lomond. I hope I pronounced this one correctly. The road was, for me personally, at least, it was stressful. It was wide enough for trucks and a camper van to be able to pass and we didn't have any accidents with the outer mirrors for example but it it was stressful like every time a truck would drive towards us on the other lane i would really look like okay where am i on the road am i left enough so that we can easily pass so nothing happened but that was quite a stressful drive and of course because it's a windy road next to the lake it it takes longer and then there's also scenic routes we hit one by chance which was lovely and had i known that i would have more specifically looked for such a road and yeah, I really can recommend. I will also put up a picture here. That was a really nice drive and it also wasn't crowded at all. So we had very nice views and loved it. Also, there are not many traffic jams. So generally speaking, it was very pleasant to drive. Hardly any problems with traffic. So that was really pleasant. Also, what I wanted to mention is waterfalls. They aren't so easy to find. You really have to organize for yourself and plan for one to visit. We missed one driving past it and then on the way back we didn't dare to go and park for this waterfall because we would have to cross the, the other lane with oncoming traffic so we didn't do that. And then we tried to visit one where parking was already a challenge and really getting to the waterfall was also not so easy so make sure that you know where the waterfall is located and if there is a path, what does the path look like? How far is it away from the car? So we, we had actually three attempts until we finally found our waterfall and could take nice pictures. The last section, specific sites, I really want to talk about when you visit Scotland. First off, there are many nice castles in Scotland. We visited Cullen Castle. We visited Annick Castle and we also went to Balmoral and all three of them are worth a full day visit. We didn't plan for that so we had to cut a bit short on the time and I was a bit sad about it. We, I'm still glad I got to see all of them compared to the amount of the days that we had for our vacation, for our trip. However, if I had known that I would have 
plan for arriving earlier at least and making sure I have a bit more time there. So all three sites are worth a whole day visit. Next up, the ferry bridge, very nice site. And also it will entail a, quite a hike of 30 minutes towards the waterfall, but it's not so hard to find. And there's also a big parking lot going there. At least Google wasn't able to um, point us to the right parking spot yet. And there also weren't any signs leading to the ferry bridge. So you really have to know what you're doing. What happened to us is that Google made us basically stop on, in the middle of the road. There was a little passing place for cars, but um, yeah, generally, I, I don't think that's the, the idea that you park your car there. That might have been a shorter hike up there, but still, we were lucky enough to have people tell us, so that cuts the circle back to be friendly and cooperative and also ask people, that they told us there is a parking lot further down the road, which we could take, that, um, yeah, on the other hand, meant for us longer hike more distance to walk, but it was still a nice experience. We passed a nice bridge, a nice other river to look at. So um, it was definitely worth it. Also, what I wanted to say, if, you, if you're if you in a souvenir shop, Edinburgh, for example, is very expensive. We, no surprise, we were up in the castle in Edinburgh. So to get the things up there, of course, it'll people will charge accordingly when, when you're in the shop there. And I really have to say, if, if you're in a place where there's nice souvenirs, go ahead. There is a difference of the variety that's being offered and what you really pay for it. I didn't buy so much as I wanted in Cullen Castle, for example, but the souvenir shop there was really nice. And really grab the opportunity and get your stuff when you see it. Lastly, on Isle of Skye, we were a bit careful on Isle of Skye about... For example, the ferry pools, I was a bit conscious on really going and visiting them. Also, the old man of store, you really have to be into hiking. And since um, I know my daughter isn't, I didn't also want to engage in trying to, to visit that site. What, so what we did is we stopped at uh, several uh, smaller places in Isle of Skye. There was this one nice hotel where we stopped. I can also um, share the picture again here. And then we also parked next to a ferry point, which also gave nice views. We visited Portree. Portree is worth a short visit, I would say, where you have the little seaside that's nice to look at, but there's not super much else to do. There's a nice cafe and then you can move on and visit other sites. So you don't need to plan as much visiting time for Portree. And that's my tips for you. I hope you found them helpful and informative. Let me know um, if there's anything you would like to add in the comments below. Please like, share and subscribe. I would be really thrilled to have you visiting back my channel. So hopefully see you soon. Bye.